so it looks like Black Lives Matter has infested West Point, which is a military academy that trains cadets to be engaged in leadership roles in the army. Now, here's a picture. And what you see before you is 16 black female cadets that are getting ready to graduate, taking pictures with their fists raised. Now, before I get into what the fist actually means, what I want to do now is tell you why they were taking the picture and what's up with the uniforms. OK, at West Point, it's kind of a tradition to take these kind of pictures before you graduate. You no know, graduation photos in front of Denninger Hall. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. But it's a very old place, historic from the 1800s. And there have been many photos taken since then in front of that same place. Right. And they're wearing their old ceremonial uniforms. Now, the gray uniforms are part of what is called the old corpse photo. You got the old gray uniform. You got the ceremonial saber and you're in front of Ninja Hall. Now, that's called the old corpse photo. And that's kind of the historical background behind the whole thing. Now, moving forward from the reason why I'm taking the photos and, you know, what they were wearing and everything else. Understand this. These photos represent the military. The uniforms are not necessarily what you're going to wear out there every day as being in the army, of course. But it is a U.S. Army uniform. So anytime you're wearing that uniform, you must do things that are becoming of the army, according to the DOD regs, the regulations that say what you must do do and what you must not do while you're in uniform right so let's get to the fist now if you don't know what the fist is if you don't know what it represents the fist is like black solidarity anytime you got 16 black women together at west point which is pretty much 70 percent white and even less females probably about 70 percent white and 80 percent male so black females i think in this photo this is all the black females at the actual school. Now, granted, I think it's only a thousand in the graduating class. It's not that many people in the actual graduating class. It's not a humongous. Now, when you think about an academy, when we think about any kind of school for people that are not in high school. You may think of a big college campus, like 30,000 people, but it's not quite like that at West Point. And you also may think about, you know, people doing rebellious actions, people engaging in uh, political banter protest stuff like that you don't have that at west point because the whole point is to have a cohesive military one that is not partisan one that does not have infighting within the actual group so to have any kind of thing where you got your fist raised up that goes against the whole point of having the military the military is supposed to be a unified group to be able to protect and serve not a group that is divided in little cliques that cannot even be together as one let alone protect anyone so let's get back to the fist. The fist is a long standing tradition in the black community that represents black solidarity, that represents black resistance to oppression. It represents any kind of black political thing. And the biggest political thing right now is the Black Lives Matter movement. This is very obvious. The Black Lives Matter group is probably the most popular black group going on right now. I'm sure these black girls, these young girls, probably, you know, 20, 21 years old, all talk about it because it's all in the news is everywhere. And if you don't think that the black fist is appropriately assigned to black lives matter, you think that it could be assigned to other groups. Well, tell me another group that uses it right now. That is as popular as black lives matter. Right. And they're on college campus just because it's West point and protests are not permitted and they are prohibited does not mean that they don't have some of the same feelings as other kids, their age. And you got 16 black girls together raising the fist what else could it be, right? If you had 16 white guys doing the Aryan Hitler salute, right? I mean, nobody would take that for anything else other than them appealing to Nazis or to any kind of white supremacists, skinheads, stuff like that. They might as well put the thunderbolts on their neck and the Nazi symbol on top of their bald shaved head, tattooed it on there and just come out and say, yeah, I'm a Nazi, etc." If you're gonna do that pose, in your uniform with your saber in front of Ninja Hall, right? So to say that they're just doing the fist for no reason, 16 black girls, I mean, come on. And you can't do that in your uniform. It's against regs. And that's the whole problem here. Now, this whole thing was brought to the forefront by a guy named John Burke. Now, you may recognize him. If you take a look at the screen, you may recognize this guy. If you're online a lot like I am, 
because he's been on Facebook. I think the main thing he's known for is having these videos where he's screaming at people and kind of like uh, not screaming at people, but kind of like screaming at his phone or talking very loud about weight loss and not being fat and whatnot. You know, he's very popular on Facebook for that because he's like a personal trainer and he's also a veteran. He was in the army. He enlisted at age 17. He did not go to West Point as far as I know, but he did go to Iraq and Afghanistan, alternating respectively from 2003, I think, until 2011. So he is a veteran. He has seen combat action. And at one point he was overweight and lost a lot of weight. And now he's like a big fitness guy. And he's been on TV due to his popularity on Facebook. You know, I saw him on a show called The Doctors. And I post a link to that in the description box below so you can check that out and see a little bit more about what's going on. Now, I say all that about him to give you a little bit of disclosure to let you know that this guy is very popular and he's been on TV. So you may think that what he's doing, revealing what's going on on his blog with these young women is part of his whole thing to just get more views to his website, to get more popularity, to get his whole thing going, you know, as part of his campaign to become more popular, to become more famous, to get on more TV shows, etc., to accelerate his training business. But that may or may not be the case. I think that the main thing that brought this to the light was the fact that he is very popular. And by him being so popular, anything he posts is going to get a lot of traction and attention. Right. So when he posts this, it just happens to get a lot of attraction and attention because of his popularity already. And it's not necessarily that he's trying to promote it just to get more views, the views came because of who he is and because of his status online. That's my opinion. But regardless of whether he did it just to get attention or what have you, the point is that you can't do this. And this is an example of what these subversive groups like Black Lives Matter do, right? They come into college campuses, they come into the minds of young people and they corrupt it. There's no reason why you should be holding your fist like that in front of the ninja hall in your uniform with your saber. There's no real reason for that other than you just trying to get some attention other than you just trying to be racially provocative. Now, these women have been defending themselves on this app called Yik Yak. I'm not really sure what that is, but I'm assuming it's some kind of messaging platform where you can go on there and speak anonymously because they said that the women were speaking anonymously to defend themselves. And they said that you know, they didn't know anything about any kind of political activity, which I really don't think that that's possible. Unless you live under a rock, you know what that black fist means and you've seen it. I mean, if you go to blacklivesmatter.com, go on their front page and you could see the black fist being raised. Go to the about me section. You could see the black fist prominent as clear as day as part of their logo, as part of their branding, as part of what they do. If you just Google search Black Lives Matter and then once you get to the search results, click on the images, you'll see black fist being raised. This is an old school symbol that came around like in the 60s and 70s during the civil rights movement. You know, it was very big. You saw the guys in the Olympics. They had the black fist raised. You know, it was two black guys with the fist and they had the black gloves on it. And the one white guy did not raise his fist. Right. He was not part of that whole situation. Well, he was, but he wasn't. Whole different story for another video. But my point is very simple. They know what's going on unless they're completely ignorant to the world. They know what's going on and they know what they're doing. So this was a bad judgment call on all of their parts, right? There's been like little op-ed type things being written. I think it was one woman. I forget her name. Her name was Mary. I don't remember her last name, but I'll post that in the description box below so you can read that. And reading it, I didn't get through the whole thing of what she wrote, but I got through a lot of it. And reading it just lets me know that identity politics in the black community are very toxic because this woman got to talking about food and you know, all kind of stuff that the black community does. And it's like, what does that got to do with these women violating the rules? See, we got so far to the left in the United States and we got so far into coddling diversive, subversive culture, especially that within the black community. We got people believing that we actually care about their upbringing, their life and the kind of food they eat and all of their personal feelings. Who cares? If you break in the rules, you break in the rules. It doesn't matter. If you feel like you want to be, you know, you want to be boisterous, you want to be loud, you want to be a political person, then don't become in the military. And the thing about it is you can actually be political in the military, but you just can't do it in your uniform because you're representing the army with your uniform on. You can't have a partisan viewpoint while representing the army because it destroys the whole thing of cohesiveness. You're supposed to all be on one accord. 
your uniform should just be a uniform and that's it. Any kind of political thing outside of that is not to be incorporated because it's all about your uniform and it's all about being one unit, not separate little divisive cliques. If you want to get more involved with politics, maybe you should go to a situation like a regular college campus, go to some university where Black Lives Matter and all that have already infested and you can just partake in that. Drink that cyanide lace Kool-Aid there, but don't do it at a military academy. West Point, of all places, is not the place to do that. So they're talking about they could be expelled, kicked out of school, which is very sad, actually. You know, I'm not going to hope for that because they're about to graduate in two weeks. These are graduation photos. They're 2016 graduate class. They're about to graduate like right now. This would be very sad if they were to get expelled or something like that. But at the same time, I mean, what are you going to do? You sign an oath. You know what it is. You sign a pledge. You know what you're getting into before you get into it. So what's going to be the actual penalty here? It must be a penalty. You can't just allow this to go unfettered because what's going to happen next is you're going to have some neo-Nazi guys with their head shaved and doing a Nazi Aryan salute. Then what are you going to do? Because if you didn't do anything for these women that are using the Black Lives Matter fist, the black solidarity fist, then how can you do anything to the white guys doing a Nazi Aryan salute? Now, I'm not trying to say that they are the equivalent to each other. That's unimportant. The point is that it's a political symbol. It's a political sign done while wearing a uniform, which is against regulation from the DOD. So at a certain point, it must be some kind of penalty here. If they get expelled, that'd be sad. But at the same time, I won't necessarily be against that because, again, they broke the rules. So that's all I got to say. I mean, what do y'all think? Do you think this was a political gesture, overt, trying to be part of the Black Lives Matter movement, trying to make themselves feel more black than what they are? Or is it much ado about nothing? Do you think it's just them raising their fists, just taking pictures? And there were other pictures that were released in the set. But the picture of them with the fist raised is the one that has got a lot of attention. So... Do you think it's just the media trying to blow things out of proportion? Do you think the guy, John Burke, is just trying to get more attention, trying to get more TV time, etc.? Whatever your comments are, let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.